Good morning. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And I have got a uh, 7 a.m. August 31st, 2023. When did that happen? <laughs> That's crazy. Hold on. I got to see y'all's comments. Let me pop them in here. Oh, good morning, Deborah. Candace. Candace. Can you believe uh, Candace was one of my uh, private lesson students on uh, using in Brilliant Stitch Artist 2 to turn paper applique into machine paper patterns into machine embroidery. And uh, we had a little a little hiccup and it was driving me crazy. I could not figure out what had happened. And I literally woke up in the middle of the night and realized what the issue was. We were trying to reverse point stitches on the inside of letters. And for some reason, they didn't transfer over into the embroidery design. And then it was a bing. <laughs> I was sent her an email yesterday and said, I figured it out. We got to do it in the embroidery stitch file, not in the uh, vector drawing. So... Hey, good morning. We've got Australia. Nancy's here from Shirts, Texas. Hey, neighbor. How are y'all? Good. Good to see everybody. So we are stitching the Seasonal Stitchy Stars Table Runner. This is a table runner. Uh, it could be a bed runner. It's 79 and a half. And it is the same block, seven blocks for all seasons you just change your fabric combinations to make it work and any of the fabrics you might need are on the back of the pattern the pattern is a uh, you can either get a hard copy or if you're outside the u.s you or even inside you can do a instant download they sell the pdf so that's great y'all i've got to tell you uh i am hardwired into my my laptop with the internet and I have gone back and I look at my videos in the evenings and, you know, I've got internet jitter and whatnot. And I apologize. I live in the country and you guys are sweethearts to uh, stick with me. Of course, a lot of you kind of just throw on the picture on the TV or a lady told me she listens in her car on the way to work and don't watch drive. Okay. Okay. And uh, you guys are just piddling around in your sewing rooms. And I think that's great. So the audio is pretty good. The video, meh. <laughs> but you guys are great to stick with me for that. So, oh, all my Texas girls are in the house. You guys are chiming in. Well, hey, even California is early for you, sister. Okay, so today we are doing the cozy block. But while everybody kind of gets in here, I just want to show you guys, we'll off topic a little bit. I am making through my home, because we're not going to do a live on Sunday. This coming Sunday, Labor Day weekend, there will be no live. So FYI, I've made the call. So I am making the American Pie uh, block of the month with my local quilt shop, Fiberworks. And I just want to show you guys, I got... Uh, these blocks right here are, those are the first of the, uh, they're called framing units. And so for this month, I'm on my third month. So I got those done. That's really nice. Have those finished. And then yesterday I got a hair, uh, <clears throat> and decided I was going to make, do y'all, do y'all ever do this? I decided I was going to make a set of pot holders for every month for me and my daughter-in-law, whether she wants them or not, they're coming in the mail. I'm not telling her about it. I'm just going to do it. So in case I miss a month, she won't, you know, so I got the, um, I, I chose October. So month art to heart is the maker of the books, but midnight manor on wander lane is the name of the series of books. So you're supposed to take a project class at the quilt shop. It got rescheduled due to the hurricane. Well, Catherine, I hope I'm a suitable sub. <laughs> you can't take your project class. Bless your heart. I heard that um, they're still going to play that college football game on Sunday, though. So they've got all kinds of, of on Wander Lane, right? Well, connecting 
threads got a restock of these books. I've linked to them below the video. Okay. And I just got it in my head. So I want to make these pot holders. Well, the pattern that they show is a bat. Well, I don't want the bat. And so I'm looking around and there is a, see the pumpkin sitting on top of the jack-o'-lantern with the leaf and the stem. See that? So that, it says in the book, see, you can take any of these designs that finish out to six inches and put them in the pot holder. So that pumpkin with the little stem finishes out. So I traced it yesterday on my new little wafer light box, which I love. And I cut out my pieces yesterday. So I'm going to do a dark pumpkin and a light pumpkin for each set with a light leaf, dark leaf, and the stems. I've got those all done. And then today, I'm going to, and I already did it yesterday. I popped all of this, these vector files from scanning a Brother Canvas. And I popped them into a brilliant Stitch Artist too, and I created the design in embroidery. <laughs> if that's new to you, uh, watch more of my channel. And it's not all fuzzy like this, you guys. I, I pre-record those, so they're nice and clear. But um, check that out so you can see how to do that. Yeah. I love it. You guys pop in and say hi to all my quilting friends. Yes. That's great. Bernadette's here. Okay. So today we're going to make the cozy star block. And this is much easier than yesterday. This is what this one is going to look like. Easy peasy. The only diagonals we have is that pinwheel in the middle and then those little half square triangles. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, April. <laughs> You're no Eleanor Burns. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> oh, that is funny, isn't it? And one of the things I really worry about people making, nobody, I mean, literally, less than, that I remember, that I remember, I remember that one but that I remember less than five total negative comments on my channel. And normally I leave them because everybody's entitled to their opinion, or maybe they were having a bad day and they didn't mean it like that. So I, uh, most of the time I'll come back and go, thanks. I hadn't thought of that. Or, you know, appreciate you watching just something simple. This channel has definitely taught me grace. The video is not fuzzy. Oh, that's good. Maybe it's my download speed with me watching it at home. That could be. Because right now I'm on an upload. That matters. Well, that's good to know. I don't feel so bad then. Good. Yeah, I absolutely can laugh off those kinds of things because, um, you know, I and I really wish parents would teach their kids this. But my dad used to annoy the heck out of me. When I'd be all upset about something somebody said to me or negative or, you know, kids in school are mean. And he would say, do they pay your paycheck? And I'm little, right? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he'd say, do they pay your paycheck? And I, I don't earn a paycheck. Well, then don't worry about what they say. You worry about what I say. And I'm like, you know, he, and, and he said that to me, I tell you. Eventually, I got tired of complaining to him about what kids were mean to me or would say to me because I knew what his answer was going to be. But that was such a valuable lesson to me. So the only person you need to worry about is your boss. So we got the Lord Jesus, right? <laughs> and your parents. <laughs> and then the person who's signing your paycheck. So and right now, yeah, right now that's me. So that's kind of cool. All right. So I've been chatting long enough. We've got lots of people on here. Uh, yep. Be like a duck. Let it roll. That's right. Be like a duck. Let it roll. Weren't we blessed to have uh, great parents like that? So we have got six A squares. So I've got six A squares, four B rectangles, eight C squares, two D squares, four E and four F rectangles. 
So on the back of A, we have got to draw, they want you to draw the line down the center and sew to a quarter inch away from either side. Uh, I don't prefer that method. To me, that's very inaccurate. So I like to use a creative grids, quarter inch. See, this is the long one. I had a short, shorter one. <clears throat> I'd have to go digging it out. Since I'm on my little eight inch Fiskars rotary mat, I'm going to, I'm going to use this one. It's a little bit shorter. So, and y'all, I'm sorry. I know there, a lady was telling me that she wanted me to move the Becky Thompson power tools with thread along the bottom. And I can't do that. That's not, not an option. So I've got this quarter inch seam guide. It has a line down the center of it. So I'm placing the center line corner to corner. And I'm going to do this on all six of these squares. And I'm using a friction fine line marker. And I'm going to draw down either side of it because then instead of guessing where the quarter inch is next to the straight line, I've actually drawn the sewing lines. So that's what we're going to do. Y'all, yesterday I noticed in two pieces of one of my American pie blocks, it's a white on white. And this has to be before Kay sent me that little black light where I can tell the right side of the white on white. But boy, don't you know, <laughs> I sewed that piece on backwards. <laughs> and I don't know if I'm going to fix that because it would require some serious deconstruction. And I think in the long run, I think I might leave it because I feel like once it's quilted in, I don't know that you're going to see that. You'd really have to. Although if I wanted to enter it in a, in a quilt show, which I actually considered because the blocks are pretty good. I'm not a, I'm not a quilt show kind of girl. I've never had the desire to do that. Have you guys ever entered quilt shows? Yeah, Betsy, you can't tell. So what was the light box again? Uh, that's the wafer two. I think I have a link to it below the video. If I don't, I will put it in there as soon as we finish. It's by daylight. And oh my gosh, it's an investment. It is not inexpensive. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I got the big one. And the reason I got the big one was because it was like, I don't know, 40 more dollars than the next size down. And in my mind, I'm thinking one day, I would want the larger box and I would be kicking myself because it was on sale. I'd be kicking myself that I didn't get it for 40 more dollars. It's kind of how I think. And I've never, you know, sometimes you have to save up to get the stuff that you want. All right. So I've got that. I just watched a video from uh, Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Y'all ever heard of them? She's got like 137,000 subscribers on YouTube. She's, she's got an online store, sells fabrics and patterns and all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know if they have a, uh, I don't, yeah, a creative decision, right? <laughs> I don't know if they have an actual storefront or whatnot, but she just announced that due to the economy that they are having to um, let everybody go and shut down their sales. She's going to keep online patterns videos, uh, you know, and a few things, books and whatnot, because she does, is a pattern designer. Stephanie, is, she has a subscription for Stephanie. So with Stephanie or something like that. And um, it didn't make it. She lost over 300 subscribers to the monthly book box that, that she had. And that was the majority. She said all this in her video. I'm not sharing private. I'm just telling you what I just watched, like right before we started. It's hard, you guys, not even for storefronts to have to maintain and make the rent. The economy's tough. Okay, so now we need to pair up 
the one we just drew on with an E square. So light on yellow. Yesterday, one of y'all mentioned you didn't, uh, you said my video was too dark. I've got lots of lights on in here now. I hope I can see on screen it's a little dark on the corner there. But we'll do what we can. What are you doing, Diane? What, you entered a quilt competition and won a sewing machine. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Oh, man. I got the wrong color thread in my machine. Yesterday, my husband came home from getting my car inspected, and he tore his brand new shorts. The pocket, like, tore out. They, they were this color. And uh, so he's complaining. Shorts were awful in this and that. So I repaired them. I fixed them. Because that's what I do. <laughs> so in, 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 in the idea of no good deed goes unpunished. I, I brought the shorts out. I even reinforced the zipper because he had these. He bought these on Amazon. And even the, uh, the pair he bought... Um, that the zipper broke, we returned those and got a refund. And then these like squash colored or brown colored ones, my pocket ripped out. So I, uh, I, I brought them in the living room and I said, Hey, I fixed your shorts. And he looked at me and he goes, throw them away. I said, but I fixed them. I took the time to fix them. And he says, I didn't ask you to fix those, throw them away. I said, okay. So they went in the donate pile. <laughs> I can't throw away stuff like that. Somebody might need them, right? And I hope my fix works. The problem was he's got a real athletic build. And he's got thighs, very muscular upper thighs. And they were, they were designed for what I call chicken legs. <laughs> So like I said, lesson learned. Yeah. I think that was a good deal to trade in that sewing machine on an embroidery machine, Diane. Changed your life, didn't it? You got to meet me on a cruise. <laughs> I'm kidding, y'all. All right. Diane was on Sew and Sale 11 with me. Okay, all the way from Australia. Keith is up. He just went out the door when I was telling the story about me throwing him wanting me to throw away those repaired shorts. One of y'all made a comment yesterday. See, I told you my needle threader stinks on this machine, so I use the old-fashioned one. And she said she's got the machine, too, and it works great, so it might just be out of alignment. So I need to tell Jason next time he's over here to do anything with spanking. Okay, good morning, Connie. All right, now we're going to be ready to go. Sewing A squares to E squares. And I'm just going to sew them all and then swing the whole nine yards around. Let me get this down here. You guys can see. And I'll zoom in a little bit if you want, are interested in watching the needle go up and down. That's fine. So we're leaving for the coast tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and do this tomorrow morning. We're going to sew the next block, which is um, the glisten block tomorrow. Oh, that's a big one. Maybe not. Yeah. We'll do glisten tomorrow. Then I won't be back here until uh, Tuesday. I got three private lessons today I'm doing only because I, I try to limit myself to two, but only because, and for those who are, I must have sewn what I do. Oh, these stay over here. Yeah, I see that. Thought I didn't have enough blocks. 
Those are private lessons to teach you how to turn paper applique into machine embroidery. And you get them on our store site, powertoolswiththreadstore.com. But when I first set that up, by default, Shopify has in the item list um, continue to sell after product has sold out. Well, I don't like that because... And that, you know, if you don't have the product, how can you sell it? So I didn't uncheck that box and it allowed somebody to, uh, to book a class at the same time that one was already booked. So I accommodated her and we're going a little bit later today. So that'll be my third class. I just had to change her time. She was very gracious about it. Okay. That was my iron I just turned on. That's the Cricut mini press. Y'all, we have a... Uh, we have a 12 point buck in our backyard. He comes around and him and a, I think it's probably a son because they're not aggressive to each other. I don't know. Uh, and an eight point. And then we've got about five does and some fawns. But uh, Keith said last night, cut down the middle between your stitches. He said last night, we probably won't see him again after the first day of hunting season. Because even though we're in a residential area, there are still some yahoos around here that would not mind uh, getting that 12-point buck. He's beautiful. I was looking at how to age them yesterday, and he's probably about four and a half or five. I'm sure some yo-yo will take it upon themselves. Oh, Diane, you are sweet. Oh, you wore your power tools with thread shirt at a girl. <laughs> to a show. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm going to fold back. It says to fold to the dark. So I am doing that. Just kind of pressing them with my fingers. Okay. What are you guys doing? You started. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I've never entered any kind of quilt show, never done anything. I got to tell you guys, my quilty buddy, Lisa, she is making this, um, this quilt. And it's a quilt challenge for her local, they have a quilt club in their local neighborhood. She's at like in one of them Del Webb communities or something like that. Something, I don't know. I don't know that it's Del Webb, but anyway. Um, this quilt she's making. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to show it to you guys. It's incredible. And she's had to come up with it on her own. And well, I'll tell you, so the theme is life is better dot, dot, dot. And so you have to come up with what life is better with, right? And then make a quilt around it. So the last one she did, the the quilt challenge was to make a quilt on a book. Well, she drew the book, you know, they pulled these book titles out of a hat and um, she had Anne of the Green Gables. So she made this quilt, Anne of the Green Gables. I think I, I think I showed it to you guys. Anyway, I'll show you that too. I'll bring that up next time we do a little chat. This, this quilt, oh my gosh. The way her brain works, it's amazing. I admire that so much. It is not a gift that I have, but I sure can champion it, can't I? I just admire that. So, hi, Mary. Okay, Mary wants to know, if I use the Missouri Quilting Seam Guide, do I still use the turn of cloth method? 
So that turn of cloth method is only used when you sew on the line, not, not, so if you're using the Missouri star seam guide, you are drawing a line beside. So in short, the answer is no. You're drawing a line with the seam guide beside the corner to corner. You're not drawing a line on the corner to corner. So, and generally when you, you don't, these are designed so when you use the seam guide method, they stitch out two sides. You don't have to worry about one side being shorter than the other, which is the whole point with the corner to corner. I can't remember who needs this. Yeah, that turn of cloth issue changed my world when it came to. We did it yesterday. Are we going to do it today? I don't think we are. I don't think we're going to do it today. It's not part of what we're doing where you... Um, draw the line and that's used for what Pat Sloan calls the, I think fold and flip and cut, flip and fold method, something like that. Where you have a base shape and you're trying to recreate another point of it with a different color fabric and you cut it. That's what that is. I can hear Harley. Keith got her. She's outside. Okay, so now we are going to sew these, and y'all need to pay attention to the color. So we're going to sew four corner squares. So this half square triangle, the yellow part goes down, and we're going to sew like this. Yep, that worked. I know when you're playing with bias, it sure can, um, you're sewing on a, a stretch, it sure can mess with the size of your squares. Okay. And then the other one, has the color up in the upper right corner and it gets this one. Okay, so I'm gonna sew, I need to make four of these like this and the other ones like that, there we go. I'm just going to sew all of these that are the same first so that I don't, it's just easier to sew the same thing over and over and over as opposed to changing every time. What's going on with you guys? Good morning. Traveling 200 miles, Francis. All right. Be safe. Watch out for the crazies on the road. Don't hit no cows. That's what my husband always tells me when I leave the house. He goes, love you, bye. Don't hit no cows. <laughs> <laughs> I know proper grammar is don't hit any cows. <laughs> we just tease each other. Have y'all seen those advertisements for that new program called Grammarly? I think that's the worst thing ever, <laughs> ever. You don't have to be good at English and you don't have to have grammar because the computer will just do it for you. Just don't even worry about it. It was like when I gave my, um, and as a grammar person, good morning, Frito. Uh, I was always in A's in English all through school. 
always. And uh, my, my youngest grandchild, who's six, I gave them Kindles when I went up there in, uh, earlier this month. And the other two are avid readers. Well, the six-year-old, of course, he's not reading quite just yet as well as his big brother and sister. And he says, uh, he says, I just want audio books. And I said, why? And he goes, because then I don't have to read. And I said, oh, no, that's not happening. He didn't like that. <laughs> Grammy said, no. <laughs> I said, because if all you do is listen to audiobooks, you're going to be the dumb guy in school. And he looked at me. I said, because if you know how to read, you can know everything there is to know. You got to use your head, too. So he didn't like that. Too bad. Tough love, right? Yeah, you're a visual learner. Oh, Cynthia says, yep. Okay. So these get pressed to the block that is not a half square triangle. Got a nice quarter inch seam on that. See that? That turned out good. All right. And then they get sewn together. And I have to pay attention to just like this. Yep. That looks good. So I'm going to nest these and stitch. I didn't pin. That's not my norm. I usually will pin, but... I'm just going to hold it together with my fingers. Let's see. Was it worth the gamble? Yes. That, that turned out great. And that one, I am going to press that open when I get to that point. Okay. Oh, boy. Yeah. You know, most of the people, I think, on YouTube are hands-on they're visual learners. Most people are visual learners. I like to read the instructions and then see it. I, I do like written directions. I had, I've had people email me and say, can you write out the steps? how to do the chicken salad quilt. I'm like, no, I can't. <laughs> I'd still be writing that. There is no way. And I get that, but that's not, I can't do that. Have I ever made an in the who quilt block design? Are you talking to me? I, I don't, I'm not a digitizer. No, that's not my shtick. I, I don't care for that. I don't have, so Julie from Designs by Juju and I were talking last night about how, you know, the designs that we're going to make on the cruise. She was, we were kicking ideas around and stuff. And it, there, it's going to be fun. On That's so and sale 14, May 9th through the 18th. But I cannot come up with stuff. So... She'll say something and I'm real good at, I'm real good at giving my opinion. Yeah, that'll be good or eh. <laughs> I'm real good at opinions. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, Janine, that's a great, that's a great point. Reading aloud has to go hand in hand with reading. So you hear proper sentence structure. That's right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Reading definitely helps with proper sentence structure. When I was in the military, many, many of my jobs were proofing awards and decorations, um, annual performance reports, that kind of thing, where you needed to at least, you know, no, it had to sound right. 
So the grammar definitely, definitely helped. Okay. Yeah. trying to remember my, this thing my mother taught me. Let me see. Just signed up for So and Sale 14, Candace. Oh, we're going to have a good time. You will love that. You can hang out with me. We'll have fun. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to be a good time. So my, I was learning pronouns and my mom taught me what she was taught back in the dinosaur days. <laughs> personal pronouns. Um, I, we, he, she, they, you, it. Possessive pro, plural pronouns. Uh, me, us, we, us, him, her, them, you, it. Something like that. <laughs> I, we, he, she, they, you, uh, it. Yep. Me, us, him, her, them, you, it. And that helped me so many tests. <laughs> Isn't that something? Okay. Looking forward to sharing your coffee with me. You know, I, I Keith and I were talking last night and I said, you know, I, I certainly, because I sew every morning, why not just turn the camera on? And, you know, you guys are nice enough not to say anything about my hair or my makeup. <laughs> and you just, you're just here for the sewing and the chatter. Oh, that's so nice and flat with that pressing seam guide board. I've got a link to these in my Etsy store, y'all. Very nice. World of difference if you're going to press your seams open. I should have trimmed my dog ears. All right, what's next? What's next is we have to sew B and F units together, the rectangles. All right, those look good. And they are supposed to finish, not finish, they're supposed to measure. What are they supposed to measure? All right, they do. They're supposed to measure three and a half, and they do. Yay. Okay. So this is good. I got, those are my corner units. So we need the B rectangles, which is a background, and the F rectangles, which is the brown. I got two fat quarters in my kit of the brown. I felt like I won the lotto. <laughs> that was a mistake on the fat quarter shop's part. <laughs> I said, oh, look at this. Yay. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Okay, we're going to sew, and we need to press to the light side on this. Okay. I can do that. You'd love the morning videos. Yeah, you guys don't have anything to do. <laughs> it's a nice way to start your day. Just have a cup of coffee, visit. See what Becky's up to. Somebody had said in, um, in the All Brands, Lone Star University, she said, you've cost me so much money. She said, I need to unsubscribe. But but I can't unsubscribe because I need to know what you're doing. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> There's nothing to watch on TV anymore, just about. I like I like reality shows like Survivor or um, Amazing Race and uh, that other one, he, uh, that guy who does Amazing Race. I call it Dirty Jobs. That's not what it is. Dirty Job, Dirty Hands, Dirty, Dirty, whatever it is. That's the name of the team. Anyway, I like watching those shows. But I don't watch regular TV. I, Keith was watching TV the other night, 
and I walked in and I looked at the screen and there was something on screen I did not want to see. And, uh, yeah, you no, know, you're not alone in your sewing room. I'm here. Yeah. So there was something on the TV screen and I said, you know, I do not want that in my living room. This is why I don't watch TV with you in the evening. It's horrible. Horrible. And back I go into my sewing room to watch YouTube <laughs> where I can choose my content. Right. So. Let's see. Getting two of the dark fat. It was listed twice in the color list. Really? Huh. You don't think so? there's two? Did I not win the fabric lotto? Are you telling me that? Let me see. Uh, no. Well. Oh, you are right. You are absolutely right. Yeah. So you do need two of the brown. You need it for print number four and the middle border. Thanks. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, I know. Hello, Frito. Good morning. Here, you want to say hi to everybody? Is it? No, she's moving. She's walking away. Okay. She's not interested in saying hi. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah, I've heard the chosen is pretty good. Um, we like we like military shows too. So we watch that. Here, Diane's a YouTube junkie. Yep. Lotto bubble burst. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Dang it. I thought I got the fabric lotto. I was like, oh, they threw in an extra. I guess I should have read the pattern and seen. So, yeah, I know, Vicki. It's okay. That's all right. You know, either you do it now or it would have come to me when they when I needed that other fat quarter and then I, a, a dim bulb would have <laughs> been brighter and I'd have gone, oh, I see. <laughs> That's okay. I should have known better. The, the fat quarter shop doesn't get very much wrong at all. Oh, I got to tell y'all, this is so funny. Let me see, what am I doing here? Right sides facing... Fabric A with a fabric D. Fabric A with a fabric D. So, and A still has the drawn lines on the back, and we're going to make half square triangles with this one. So, last night, some of y'all watched Joy Bernhardt, and uh, she texted me last night. We were texting about something, and, and she said, I got to get a new, uh, I got to get a new scan and cut. I've been on the phone with this company trying to get, I got to get a new scan and cut. And I was like, don't you already have a scan and cut? And she says, yeah. She says, what's the most recent model? Is it the 325 or the 335? I said, there's no such thing as a 335. And she said, well, my friend said there's a 335. I said, no, the most recent one is 330D. And I happen to know from my all brands Lone Star University that brother is not coming out with a new one next year. So you have, and the 325 is the same as the 330D, except it doesn't have Disney. So she says, well, mine's broke. My scanner's broken. And I'm like, what do you mean? How'd you do that? How'd you break your scanner? She says, I don't know, but she sent me a picture of a scan she just did and it has a long straight black line right down the middle of it. I said, there's something in there. She was like, they're trying to sell me a new scan and cut for $649. It's a heck of a deal. I really ought to get it. And I said, no, 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 not yet. Not yet. Don't do that. <laughs> so <clears throat> I said, why don't you clean the scanner glass? She says, well, how do you do that? So I told her, there's a little button underneath. You press that and that little back part comes out. Y'all, don't you know, she pulled that out. 
there was a big old giant chunk of black vinyl in there. <laughs> Stuck. <laughs> I told her, I said, that looks too straight and too perfect. Press to the dark. Too straight and too perfect to be a, a breaker or, or something like that. She was so excited. She's like, yay, yay. She says, Jerry, Jerry, she says, look, Becky helped me fix my skin cut. I told Jerry, I'm going to send you a bill because I just saved you $650. <laughs> oh, man. Your skin and cut quit cutting. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah, brother's really good about fixing their stuff. I did. I saved her big bucks. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Was I, of course, the reason they have a motorhome is because we bought a motorhome. And then Joyce says, well, I, I want a motorhome. Becky's got one. I got to have one. So here, oh, call it Fiona's coming in from Scotland. Girl, I'm trying to get over there. I'm working with Jim West from uh, Destination Craft to uh, try to get a trip scheduled over there. So I think we have to wait until all the, you know, stuff gets worked out. But I don't know if it's a good time for travel, though. Um, you know, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. All right. So here we have, this is our make four. This is our A and D units. Okay. Now we just got to put this whole thing together. Oh, the A and D units are making up our pinwheel in the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so this goes this way. I'm looking at the picture, y'all, and this way, and this way, and there we go. All right. Nest these seams. Straighten it out. Cross your fingers. She said, I was trying to talk with their service people and I asked them how to open it up and clean it and they wouldn't tell me. And I, I get that. And I'll tell you why. Because if a service person tells you how to do something, and you do it and you break it. Now, then you can say, well, you told me how to do that. You told me to do that. So now you owe me a new machine. I can totally understand that. Okay. We got a good quarter inch seam down there. I totally get that. So I don't blame the service company. Yep. Well, now what did I do? Y'all sewed it wrong. Dang it. Did I? No, it was upside down. <laughs> no, I didn't sew it wrong. I was upside down. All right. Okay. Oh, now here's where I'm going to anchor these. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to press these open. This is not going to be pretty, you guys. I don't think. Pinwheels, you know, I, one of my very first attempts at quilting included a pinwheel block. And I did not realize how difficult they are to get correct. So when I see those quilt patterns that have tons of pinwheels in them, I usually run, run away screaming with my hair on fire. I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. Okay. 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a pin and I'm going to go in the back and hit that. I've got the pin. I'm hitting that point right there. Okay. And I'm going to put it in. Oh, I don't have a good quarter inch seam on that one. Look at that. See that? That's not a good quarter inch seam. That's not going to work. So the, the white and the orange should match and they don't. And I'm not having that. Not having it. Because if the white and the, if those two don't match, you're just asking for continued problems. Just asking for it. Okay. Let's do this again. I'm going to butt these up together. And we're going to pin it in one side of the seam allowance and out the other. All right. There we go. Now the orange and the white match. Okay, so that's half the battle right there. I'll press that seam open. Now when something looks bad, don't put your head in the sand and cross your fingers because that's not going to work out. So now I'm going to take this pin and I'm going to go in right on that tip straight. And I'm going to hold this unit Hold the pin horizontal. I'm going to pin the end together so that they don't dance around. They know where I want them to be. Okay. Hold that pin horizontal. I'm going to take another one and I'm going to go in one side of the seam allowance at a diagonal and out the other side of the seam allowance. And then where that pin is, I'm going to draw my landing strip. I leave nothing to chance, y'all. <clears throat> I do not want to do it again. Okay. Pinwheels. Uh, so hard. Get this straight. I want you to sew straight, if you wouldn't mind. These are just techniques I have developed over the years. Years of frustration. Uh-oh, here we go. Ready? Boom. Just like that. Yep. <laughs> yes. That's how it goes. Yeah. You know, Nancy, I've seen those papers and I get it. I hate. What a mess. What a hot mess. They work good. They do. But once you get that figured out, you know, and you don't have to use the papers. Okay. Okay. So I've pressed my seams open on the back of the block and my tri my pinwheels happy, 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 happy. Yeah, that works. Okay. So what are we doing now? Now we need to assemble the block. So on, on the rectangle units, the white goes to the outside. We're going to put this down here. I'm going to go ahead and assemble this on my so let me put all these back okay so let's see this goes here 
in here like this. Once again, you guys, we're back to the basic nine patch. Okay, these triangles, these units, it matters which way they go. So you need to pay attention to that. Yep, and yes, there we go. No green in this one. So that's how it's going to stitch out. So I always stitch blocks one and two together on all three rows first. You receive your prize of basic rulers and patterns. Oh, you're welcome. You are very welcome. I'm glad you got that. Enjoyed it. Yeah, you were so funny. Thanks for singing to me. <laughs> hey, Jude. <laughs> Don't take it. <laughs> I always have a song running through my head. Do you guys have that? always have a song running through my head. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's not good. I'm interested to know if I hit the point on the first one I sewed. I may not have, and I might have to do it again. Let's see. That looks good. That's fine. That's this one. Can't see. Did I get this one? Yeah. Ta-da. That looks good. Okay. So rows one and three press to the outside. I always go opposite of what they do, but that's okay. One and three, press to the outside. Number two, even rows, press to the inside. They wanted it the other way around. I think because there's so many seams in that pinwheel. Okay, I'll do it your way this time. I think. Good. We did two piece unit upside down. Which one? My two piece unit. All right, we're gonna look. You you are correct. Okay, thank you, thank you. You are absolutely right. Eagle eyes, good. So I had to end up unstitching that, but not for the reason I anticipated or I was fearing. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Okay. Let's do it again. Shall we? This goes like this and this goes like this. Yep. Not a girl. You guys are the best. Are you guys um, button sewers or foot pedal sewers? Ah, Lynn, you're making those dinosaurs. Yeah. It can get crazy. Someone was asking me, you know, about the machine and wanting to know about a green button. So this is, that's right. This is right. Okay. And um, I don't care for the button because I feel like I don't have any control over the machine. I uh, definitely prefer, this is all in my way. I definitely prefer the foot pedal. I just feel like I have better control. Did 
I get that? I did not. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it when I did it. It didn't sound right. It's supposed to go thunk when it goes over the seam, and it didn't. I knew I didn't hit it. Okay. So I'm going to nest these real tight. I'm going to pin in one side, out the other. Now I'm going to sew it again. That's better. Look how much extra fabric I've got down there at the bottom, though, down here. No, that happens. That happens. Oh, these get pressed to the inside. What? Turn my top row. Yeah, I already did. So, okay. Well, button for embroidery, Janet. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But foot pedal for sewing, for sure. Good grief. I just, I just don't feel like I have any control whatsoever if I'm sewing with the button. I first saw that on one of those ever sewn machines. And um, I was like, what is that? You know what it is, is I press these seams open. I told you guys I have a hard time nesting when I press my seams open. It's very difficult for me. It's so much easier to feel it when you've got your seams folded to one side. Let's see. Okay, these look good. These are pressing to which way? This one presses to the outside. All right. Okay. Barefoot. I can't sew with my shoes on either, Bernadette. Uh, just matter of fact, I've got my flip flop on under here and I always kick off the one for my foot pedal. And my other one, I have one foot. I'm like deedle deedle dumpling, my son, John. <laughs> okay. And then these are pressing inward. All right, y'all. We're getting there. Okay. So I'm going to nest these. And it looks like, okay, I'm going to sew from this side so I can see the point. You know, I took a, I took one quilting class from a local lady here years and years and years ago. And there was so much I did not learn. Although it was basic, you know, she talked about quarter inch seams and we're just putting stuff together. But there was so, so much I did not learn the nuances of making sure hitting points, those kind of things, not tipping points. Boy, stuff I've learned. Oh, we've got another one here. That's just wonderful. Okay, so there's another nest right here. And I'm going to go in one side of the seam line and out the other on a pin. <coughs> Excuse me. And to make sure I hit it, I'm going to take a pin and go in that point from the back side and draw my target on the front so I don't miss it. Okay, same here. I'm going to nest these with a pin. take another pin, find my point to hit, and draw my target. 
because the odds of getting it right blind are very, very low. Okay, let's see how we did. <laughs> That's good. 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 And good. That's how you do that. Don't sew blind. Nest your seams together, pin one side of the seam allowance and back out the other, and draw your target landing spots. I love this. That worked out great. All right, you guys. Final seam. Yep. Gonna do it again. You've passed on some tips and tricks in classes. Oh, wow, Sabrina. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm no, you know, I'm not a professional. I don't, well, am I, do I do this for a living? <laughs> kind of. People don't realize they could pop into the channel and have private quote lessons, right? Yeah. But I appreciate that. That's very nice. I'm just going to do this. All right. So I'm going to anchor these in one side of the seam allowance with the pin at a diagonal out the other, draw my landing spot. I have got, what am I doing? This one, I had the seam pressed open and flat. And a lot of times what I'll do is I will take a quarter inch seam, just kind of lay a quarter inch seam guide and lay it on there. I just want to make sure I hit that. so that it's straight. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. All right. Let me see. Well, I need a I need a point to stitch at right there. Okay, and right here. All right. Last seam, you guys. sometimes y'all when you're stitching on these in the middle of the block it feels like you're like curving way up into it or something well you might be what is happening here oh i pulled the wrong pin but as long as you're at that quarter inch When you start and when you finish, you're probably going to be okay because you can steam fabric into submission. And if it's really obnoxious, you can spray it down with water and pat it dry and tell it you love it. You won't do it again. All right. There we go. Okay. So there's that one and that one. 
and that one. Look at those, you guys. In there. And that's it. We're done. And it turned out beautiful. I'm very happy with that. Let me back you guys up. I'll roll you up a little bit. Okay. So that's it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yep. All right, you guys. So this is it. This is the cozy star block. And I am very happy with how it turned out. So we are stitching seasonal stitchy stars. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. I, I very much enjoy it every morning. And we will be back tomorrow morning with the glisten block uh, uh, saddle up. It's There's a bunch of tiny pieces in that one, but we'll get it done together, okay? So I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your day, and you guys go sew something. Bye.